Hello everyone and welcome back to the walkthrough. We can now see that our save file has 117 exits with a star next to it. That means it is 100% complete, but not in my eyes. I still have that one level second half to do known as Bowser Starship. So, it looks like I am going to be doing a little bit of preparations here regarding that place. Starting with, you know, powering up, um, getting some lives at Snide Tide and whatnot. And yeah, you get, you know how things are going here by now if you've been following these parts up until this point. So yeah, let's get to that stuff off camera. Post-commentary time, because I figured I would want to have all of my concentration for this epic level. So, yep, as you might have guessed, this is the winning run of the final level in the game here. I'm gonna try and help you get through this here. Um, every time I died, I basically would have to go back to the top secret area for capes so I could get a, a decent run on this, I guess you could say. So yeah, I just saved, saved a little bit of time by just uh, reloading the state when I was at Bowser's uh, starship there. Because otherwise it would just be me trekking back over to the top secret area every time I died anyway. So it, it didn't really matter anyway. So that's why I have 99 lives here rather, th rather than whatever uh, life counts that I would have if I wouldn't have loaded states. Um, but I assure you no save states were used in this successful run here on the second half of the level. Uh, I made a mistake there because I... yeah. <laughs> and I made a mistake there, which is especially unfortunate. But don't worry too much here. Um, you'll be able to get another cape a little bit later on in the level. But the cape in the early, uh, early rooms here are pretty, pretty handy to have versus the footballs because you can actually use it to rush the football charging chucks and yeah and that's a pretty nice way to eliminate that random factor of the charging chucks kicking footballs whenever they please and be very wary here you do not want to go when the opportunity is not good there we go see that i waited until the potobu and the piranha plant were out of the way before moving and that is pretty much it for this room in particular uh, next room right here. Do not move at the start, obviously. <laughs> I debated with myself here if I wanted to go through with a fire flower or a cape here for a second because I wasn't sure if I would uh, be better off with one or the other, but I chose the fireball for this section because of the uh, upcoming Koopa coming here. Uh, you'll see in just a minute here after this Bowser statue. This Koopa right here is kind of tricky to hit with the cape when you're on the edge of there because then you have to get close to the thwomp and if you go a little too far, the thwomp might hit you. Yeah, so I just decided to shoot it from a distance via a fireball. I honestly should have switched over to a uh, cape about here though, just to eliminate the bone enemies there because yeah, they're, they're kind of a pain. Uh, but otherwise, the rest of this room is a piece of cake. Uh, next segment is the ice segment right here, and again, I was thinking about this because I know there is a cape inside that box. So I wanted to clear the way first and take out the fireball, well, fire flower, and then I get two capes right here. So, yeah, I just sort of kind of eliminated the mistake that I made earlier on the level by having both capes uh, in full force here. So, yeah. And this turns out to be a very good decision a little bit later on in the level, as you will soon see. As long as you're patient on those and keep wiping out enemies with spin jumps on that treadmill, you should be fine. Always in this room, watch for spikes. This, uh, this room has costed me more lives than any other room in Bowser's Starship. I can get through it maybe one in every ten tries. Maybe. <laughs> it's that difficult of a room. Now over here you want to do a duck jump if you have a cape, otherwise you're going to have to time yourself with the Koopa. The same thing with the upcoming other Koopa jump, or I should say mock Koopa jump here. Do a very light spin jump over here so you don't touch the spikes on the ceiling. Now watch this duck jump. Oh yeah, look at that. Isn't that a neat method? Yeah, once I found that I got a lot more consistency on this room, but... When you come to this jump, wait for the Koopa to go in the opposite direction. I made a mistake there, I should have waited up top for a bit. But, 
that's why it was a good idea to have both capes, because, yeah, look at that. See, I wouldn't have made it this far if I wouldn't have had both capes. So, yep. And now I am completely power up -less. so I'm kind of sweating at this point, but at the same time, not really. Because, as a matter of fact, this, this run here, I was the most calm out of all the runs that I've had. And I think that is what made the difference, because... Uh, being all tense and nervous and stuff like that makes it much more difficult to make a uh, educate, I should say, a good judgment decision on the obstacles that are coming along the way. So, yeah. Uh, over here, I made a slight mistake, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I jumped a little bit too late there, but that's okay. For that platform, you want to jump on the first one when it's at its lowest point, and then the other one will be at an ideal position. It takes a little bit of practice to get the timing of that all together, but yeah, that's that's why I took a hit there on the Mach Fuzzy, because if I, if I, uh, I mean, I was watching the platform more than anything, excuse me. Now over here, try and eliminate that fuzzy around the door, it's very handy to do so, and yeah, that one doesn't seem to be affected by shells for some reason. I don't know why. Well, actually, come to think of it, that's not uh, a fuzzy, that's a spark enemy uh, modified to look like um, a fuzzy kind of thing, and yeah. Now over here, down swimming past the thwomp, very handy. Uh, you know, holding down the move uh, past it just prevents you from getting up in that column and getting stuck. Yeah, and over here you want to wait just a little bit, just a little bit, to keep doing the down swimming thing. And now switch over here, because you want to go in the direction of the saw blades, just like that, and this room is a breeze. Yup. Um, this one only costed me one death out of all my runs here, because it's mostly about just running on ahead. And that's relatively easy to do based off of the level's layout here. Like, you just want to trigger that thwomp there, and now when it goes up, immediately go down, otherwise you're going to get squished. Scroll that Bowser statue off screen, because it's going to keep shooting fire, and it's really annoying. Now, right here, this is probably the trickiest part of the room, actually. Yeah, you always got to remember that, for one. But this Piranha Plant and Thwomp combo, you want to be at the ideal, I mean, at an ideal situation. If it's not, just avoid the Fireball and try and get the Thwomp to be down when the fire, uh, when the Piranha Plant is also going down, and you should be able to make it pass fine. Uh, the final room here is kind of tight, the way that it's designed, but it's not anything that's unbeatable, as you can tell there. I got a method. And yeah, once you get that, it's it's perfectly easy. I mean, it's perfectly fine and easy to get past it. And the same with this, just watch the sparks more than anything. As for Bowser here, yeah, I mean, uh, Mouser here, we've got, uh, you know, ba bombs around here. And you want to only throw one up there and vaporize the other ones with spin jumps, which I realize is the best, me best method after I was... Uh, uh, playing this very fight actually you'll actually see me transition my strategy as I figure this out um, it, It'll come don't worry. It'll come but right there. Um, I was there we go But before I was trying to eliminate bombs by throwing them into each other or something But here is where I really understood the, be the best method to, to defeat Bowser I mean Mouser <laughs> Just see I throw one bomb forward so it lands on his platform Preferably in the center, and then vaporize all bub bombs that come afterwards that he keeps throwing, just so that they don't explode in your face or anything like that. And there you go! That's it! All you just have to wait for is the bub bombs to blow up. <laughs> yep! Completed! Yeah! Bowser is defeated again! <laughs> By gaining command of Bowser's starship and its immensely immense firepower, Mario was able to scatter the entire invasion fleet into the five corners of the Mushroom Kingdom. I read that way too fast, <laughs> but I didn't know how fast I clicked through this when I was playing it. To prevent anyone from exploiting Second Reality's power supply station again, Mario used Bowser's starship to warp the Second Reality and disable the power switch, powering down all the gateways. Press the X button. Okay, I know that's not a part of the actual dialogue. <laughs> Upon returning to the Mushroom Kingdom, Mario had the starship's jump engine disabled. I mean, disassembled. Finished with the task of completely cutting off the second reality, he decided to keep the rest of the ship intact. After all, it had immensely immense firepower. Of course, Bowser doesn't quit. He'll undoubtedly be back. Again. But for now, the Mushroom Kingdom is safe and controls a powerful defensive weapon. Bowser will think twice, maybe thrice, before he hatches another scheme. Again. And the credits! Now remember, um, 
it said after the credits the first time around, get all the exits. So what happens if you get all the exits and see it uh, go through the credits again? Well, you're gonna have to see now, won't you? <laughs> but uh, anyway, this was one fun walkthrough to make a walkthrough on because it really pushed me to get my skills up to snuff in order to get these levels completed on camera. And uh, I think overall that made me a much more skillful side-scroller player. Well, at least when it comes to the Mario World engine. <laughs> but it'll, you know, it'll pass on to, I mean, the skills will pass on to other side-scrolling games as well because um, side-scrolling games, for the most part, play relatively the same. You know, aside from a few physics, and there's some enemy differences and whatnot, but yeah, you get what I'm saying here, in that the strategy for a side-scroller is is pretty similar overall from one side-scroller to each other side-scroller, and yeah. Uh, but wow, Bowser Starship, that, that truly was the most difficult level in the game. I probably spent about... Uh, I would say three hours total practicing it and doing runs on it until I finally got this successful run on it here. It is a truly formidable level and uh, if you dare to try to do it save stateless, I wish you the best of luck. <laughs> Um, if, even if you can't follow like the exact same method that I used in the video because your play style is different than mine, well, that's okay. I've noticed that there are different ways to get through uh, certain rooms. So finding your own way to get through the room, uh, through a room in a consistent way, is a pretty handy skill to have because you can you know make your own path through said levels and whatnot. So. Do not underestimate your own skill, basically, of finding a good way for you to get past something. Like, uh, I'm sure that my method of getting through Bowser Starship was different than other people's methods of getting through Bowser Starship, so... Yep, yeah, but it worked for me, as you've seen there. The level, I mean, I should say the game, is now officially 100% completed because as I said I don't really consider the walkthrough complete until I beat this sucker without save states like every level in the game save stateless and the only thing that was left was the second half of Bowser Starship which I just did <laughs> oh and uh, just to repeat as I always say well I'm already past the credits, but back in the credits, I did not make the game, those awesome people did. I just made the walkthrough to help and entertain people. This game is most certainly a worthy play if you are into hacks, but if you want to play it safe stateless, as I said, you're going to be in for a ride. <laughs> uh, Yoshi's Final Flight, Chaos Complex, Bowser Starship. All levels that I feel that there is a slight bit of luck involved in my success anyway. Like, even though I did manage to uh, get past, like, Bowser Starship there, as you've seen on camera, I still felt like that there was a bit of timing that just happened to be in my favor on certain obstacles. Uh, like that Thwomp and Piranha Plant combo in the squishy piston room that I talked about. Like, it just happened to be right there at that time, you know, in the proper place. But if it wasn't, I would have had to offset that. And in order to offset that, I would have had to uh, dodge a fireball or two. And that could have been the end of me. You know, it's, it's basically... There's a little bit of luck involved in my successful runs, I feel. In that I don't think I would be able to... Uh, beat those levels each and every time, you know, perfectly. <laughs> you know, I, I wouldn't be able to do it without dying each and every time. So, I mean, those levels really, really are insanely difficult. <laughs> I mean, I know there's harder stuff in other hacks, but I'm talking non-Kaizo difficulty. The levels in... Uh, uh, so the second reality project uh, reloaded here were for the most part pretty fair like yeah they were unforgiving but it wasn't it wasn't set up in a way that 
you couldn't react to obstacles fast enough or something like that. It, it always gave you a spot to think about what you wanted to do, you know, providing that you look ahead, you know, you keep looking ahead along the way. And yeah, so, the Resnor what? <laughs> I thought, isn't it just Resnor? Oh, forget it. There's some silliness in the credits anyway. Well, I should say the photo album anyway, like with the invisible fish and whatnot. <laughs> I'm sure you remember the invisible fish. In fact, I'm pretty sure we're past the invisible fish by now, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I was just really thinking about what I wanted to say and whatnot, which is why I wasn't really thinking about the uh, enemy list shown on screen here, so I'm not really sure if I missed it or not. But anyway, yeah. Um, second reality enemies. Kinda different. Yeah, just a little bit different. <laughs> Actually, wait, is that Pokey different from the Pokies earlier on in the game? Maybe. Not sure. Hmm. Hmm. Mm. Oh, by the way, those Panzers were obviously um, reskinned munchers. The Panzer is an enemy from uh, Super Mario World 2. Uh, no! Super Mario Brothers 2. Super Mario World 2 is uh, uh, the sequel to Super Mario. Well, actually, I should say prequel to Super Mario World. Clearly, I could not speak about the game's history in my commentary there for a second, and I have no idea why. <laughs> now that we got all the exits we are going to see third space enemies yeah an alternate ending here <laughs> that's why i wanted to show the credits again here and mass koopas look pretty silly oh bloody bill is the name of that one yoshex <laughs> that makes a lot of sense muncher kind of chart uh, they're more like you know, um, uh, from Pokemon, that uh, Trap Inch, there we go. <laughs> Those are basic enemy names, yep, yep, basic enemy names, blah, 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 keep going, keep going. Yeah, there's, uh, they're gonna eventually show some newer enemies eventually, well, he's gonna show you some new enemies eventually. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, yeah, these are new, uh, reskinned versions of enemies and whatnot, but what I mean is the, um, like the the Robox and whatnot. So yeah, like uh, Chain Chomp there was not in the original Super Mario World, obviously. Um, let's see, Kabooma. <laughs> that's I, I'm not I'm not sure if that's the name of the cannon enemy in uh, Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island. It might be though. I'm not positive of that right now. Hmm, might have to look into that. But anyway, <laughs> and wait, Magic Koopa, not Kamek. What? Tomato Man was the name of the boss. <laughs> oh, and Berserker Bills are the ones that home in on you. Okay. Uh, more Piranha Plants. Gots to have the Piranha Plants in there, I guess, again. <laughs> ah, there's the Robox. Yes, two different versions of the Robox. One is our Ninjis, one's our... Uh, well, actually, three different versions, because Cyclox, Cyclox Zero here is a custom enemy, but what I'm seeing is one is a bully and one is a ninji. Well, bullies are a custom enemy, too, so, yeah. Marty Mole instead of Monty Mole, and hey, 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 I know who you are. I know who you are. I know. No, you can't go all question mark on me. Oh? Oh? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. So, this is that powerful slitch you were talk to talking about? Alternate ending. Yes, the power is off. Quite thoughtful of Mario to deactivate it. But that won't hinder me in the slightest. Why? Why won't it hinder him? You must know. But, but we can't enable it. We were ghosts! <laughs> I guess they can't touch physical objects to an extent. Yes, but I must confess, I already have the right man for the job. This'll be quite interesting. <laughs> oh boy! Uh-oh! What could they mean by that? Well, I guess they're gonna have to find out later. And with that, the walkthrough is over. I hope you enjoyed! 
And I'll see you in the next walkthrough. I'll see you in the next walkthrough. I'll see you in the next walkthrough. 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 Through. 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 Hey, 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 yo, yo, what the heck happened to my video there? <laughs> Why, hello there, dear PK Gam. What? Who's that? What? You don't recognize me? It is I, Zyklobu. And I have a challenge for you.